Okay, so I'm going to do um, this in a different way than I normally do. Uh, so a lot of people are showing me this video. I've seen this video. It's really kind of awesome. Uh, and so this is posted on Twitter by Troy Durrell. I think it's uh, Shy Ross. Uh, and I apologize for not being familiar with the College Football League. But, I mean, so the, the point is, okay, let's watch this video. Barbell backflip. It says that right there. And I, I do know something about backflips. I can't do a backflip, but I have two daughters that both can do that. So, okay, awesome. Let's just go ahead. And I'm, I'm thinking about this. I want to analyze it. Actually, I've already kind of got a head start on this. So what I did was to put this video into tracker video analysis. And what this allows us to do is to mark the locations of something in each frame. Now, and I did a rough job. Um, the, the background does move. And so I marked something in the background uh, to kind of stabilize the motion, uh, but that's not technically the best thing to do. And and then I scaled the system based on his height. I don't even know how high how tall he is. I just put like a little under six feet, just a guess, but I don't think it really matters. And then I marked two things. Number one, I marked the location of the barbell. Okay, so as, as we scroll through this, so I'm going to mark the, lo the center of mass of the barbell right there. Now, so this is a... I assume it says 10 on there. I guess those are 10 pound plates. I wasn't sure if they're 10 kilograms or 10 pounds. Uh, normally a barbell is 45 pounds. So that'd make this whole thing 65 pounds. And I don't know his mass, but he's definitely more than 65 pounds. Let's say he's like 180 or something like that. So, you know, we're, we're on a third of the barbell is a third of his mass. So that is significant. Um, so a lot of people said, oh, it, it's not hard. It's just 65 pounds. You can do it with 65 pounds. Well, one. I mean, can you do a backflip? I can't do a backflip. Uh, that's it. Okay, so let's look at what we have. I've I've already marked the location in each in each frame. Uh, so let's just go ahead and look at. Uh, let's call this. Uh, let me rename this. If you're not familiar with Tracker Video, it's free. Uh, um, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, so this is Shy Ross. Uh, let's look at his Y motion. And let's just uh, let's look at this one. They're both in Y. That's shot. Let's change that one to. That's weird. Okay, I want to compare. Let's see, how do you do that? Plots. Mm. Let's see. Compare with. Compare with weights. I should show them both on there. Okay, let's see. Analyze. Okay, so this is, oof. This is his Y position. Um, okay, so a couple of things. One, this is this little part right here where, where he, he kind of uh, does, he goes down to get some motion up. I want to get, I know I can do this. I've done it before. Compare width. That's good. I want to change this one to, can you change that one? I feel dumb because I've used this like a ton, right? And I feel like I'm not doing what I want to do. Compare with. Wait, okay, that did it. Okay, that's good. That's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to analyze. Okay, so, uh, ooh, which one's which? This one is... Um, I guess I could change the color. Uh, I can look at the this way. If I look over here, you'll see that the barbell, I kind of estimated his center mass. So it's around his belly button, but as he pulls his legs up, it's going to move forward and up a little bit. So, But the barbell is higher than he is right here. Now, the first thing I want to look at is, is this, is, is he in free fall? I mean, he is, if you include the system of him plus the barbell. But let's look, let's just kind of try to fit um, a quadratic equation to that data. Analyze, curve fitter, um, par parabola, and, ooh, that's new. Well, so this gives a term in front of A of 8, negative 8, plus or minus 1. So that's actually pretty good, right? It should be, oh, no, wait, it should be um, 1 half G. So it should be 4.5. So this says the acceleration of 
him is less than, I may have the distance off too. How do I fit this one over here? I'll have to do that on a separate scale, I guess. Okay, um, but this is the dumbbell. I feel like he has a smaller acceleration because at this point, what happens, he's actually pulling down on the barbell, right? The, the barbell gets moving up and, and he has time to move up the whole thing. So his center mass is actually moving up before he even leaves the ground. Look at this. Let's go back right there. He's still on the ground, but look at the, uh, the motion of the barbell right here. It's already moving up. You see that? That's that top one. It's already moving up. So he's had more time to put momentum into the system by moving that barbell up. The barbell is moving up, but he his center mass is still stationary. Once he leaves the ground right there, now the barbell is near its highest point. So that's right where he leaves the ground. That's the barbell. He can actually pull down on the barbell, which seems like really weird, right? But that helps you loop over and it gives this two mass system. The, if I did the center of mass for this two mass system, it should be a parabola. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want this to go on forever. Um, but I think that's what's going on. This is hard, right? Because if you mess this up, you're gonna land up with a, a barbell on your head and that's bad. Um, but I, I, I think by getting that mass up, he can kind of use that to give himself some greater hang time. Let's just get the hang time out of this. So how long is he in the air? So right here is at 0.333, and then he lands, right, here at 0.96. So that's around 0.6 seconds. Uh, so a hang time of 0.6 seconds, we can calculate the height. I don't want to do this right now. Let's see. Let's just open up a, um, let's open up a, a Python. Let's just go up here. You see, I'm just doing this just like that. Super fast. I'm doing it for you. Okay. So I'm going to say G equals 9.8. Uh, T equals, uh, let's say I was 0.967 minus 0.33. Uh, and then I'm going to say hang time is going to give me, um, that's my hang time. I want to get that in terms of, so I, let me just write. So I have Y equals uh, Y0 plus V0T minus one half gt squared. I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, so I know time. Um, I don't know the initial velocity. So let's take half the time. So let's say t2 is t over two. And now I'm gonna go from the highest point down to the lowest point in that time. So my initial velocity is zero and I can find out the change in y. So let's say dy is gonna be equal to uh, negative 0.5 times g times t2 squared. Is that right? Print dy equals dy in meters. Let's just see what that gives. So half a meter. I mean, that seems reasonable that he went up half a meter, right? That's his center mass right here up to right there. That, that's a change in the center mass, half a meter, which is actually pretty high, okay? Um, that's the center mass for him, but you actually want to consider the center mass for the whole thing. But you'll notice here, like I said, he has a lot of time at which he's moving that 65-pound uh, mass up, and he's still in contact with the ground, so he's not jumping. It doesn't count for hang time. Um, but there you go. So I think, I think in some ways, I have a feeling that in some ways, using this barbell kind of makes it easier. Don't do this at home. Don't try it at all. And it's still super impressive but it can kind of give you a way to get your the total center mass up higher um, by increasing the time over which you jump. I'm going to say that. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so maybe this isn't useful, but that's that.